my name is Mary Sullivan and today I'll be doing my head to toe assessment. Um, so upon entering the client's room, I would provide for privacy and I would wash my hands. Um, my name is Mary and I'll be your nurse today. I'm doing a head to toe assessment on you. Will you please tell me your name and date of birth and if you have any allergies? Clay Tipton, 12-31-91. I do not have any allergies. Okay, great. So at this point, I would check all of his vital signs, and that would include a temperature with normal findings between 96.8 and 100.3 degrees Fahrenheit. I would check his blood pressure, which normally would be a systolic of 90 to 120 and a diastolic of between 60 and 80 millimeters of mercury. I would also check that his pulse oximeter reading was above 95%. I would check that his um, pulse rate was between 60 and 100 beats per minute and that his respirations were between 12 and 20 breaths per minute and I would uh, check that they were not labored or in any other way compromised being too weak or too shallow or anything like that. So Mr. Tipton, are you on a scale of 0 to 10, are you experiencing any pain today? Zero. Okay, if he was experiencing further pain, we could use the colder method to assess that, and that would um, include the character, the onset, the location, the duration, anything that exasper exacerbates the pain, um, anything that, uh, if there's any radiation of the pain, and also if there's anything that relieves the pain. So next we're going to uh, look for mental status. So um, we can see that Mr. Tipton is alert and oriented. Um, could you please tell me again what my name is? Mary Sullivan. And do you know where we are? Asheville, North Carolina at our house. And do you know what day it is? It's Tuesday the 28th. And do you know why we're here? For assessment. Okay, so Mr. Tipton is alert and oriented to place, person, situation, and time. Um, and I would describe his mood, affect, and behavior as um, calm, cooperative, and uh, positive overall. So next we're going to be looking at the head. So Mr. Tipton, have you been having any trouble hearing? No. Okay, if we wanted to examine that further, we could at this time perform a whisper test. I'm just going to look in your ears. Yes, in your ears. Thank you. And I don't see any um, anything unusual there. Um, are you having any trouble with your vision? No. If we wanted to, we could uh, use a Snellen chart, and normal findings would be 2020. Um, could you please close one of your no nostrils with your finger and breathe in? And out. Another one. All right, and will you please tilt your head back? I'm just going to take a look. And the nasal hair is present. I don't see any um, cuts or bleeding or anything like that. Um, so, would you please open your mouth for me? Thank you. And say, ah. Uh. So his mouth, the oral mucosa is wet and pink and there's no cuts or bruising. Um, his teeth are intact and everything looks good. His lips are uh, pink and moist. And so the external uh, parts of his eye look good. There's no swelling or redness. There's no discharge. Um, and so Mr. Tipton, will you please... Oh, and when I was checking his mouth, I would check for... Cranial nerves number 9 and 10, which would be the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerves. And I could do that uh, with a gag test, but we won't do that today. Um, so next we're going to uh, observe cranial nerve number 3, which is our ocular motor nerve. And we're going to use Perla to do that. So I'm going to turn off the lights. And Mr. Tipton, can you just look straight at me, please? And I'm going to shine a light in your eyes, okay, one at a time. Thank you. 
Okay, very good. Thank you. So his pupils were equal, they're round, and they reacted to light. And now we're going to test for accommodation and uh, we're going to test for crayonders 3, 4, and 6, which will be our ocular motor again, our um, trochlear, and our abducens. So please follow this pen light with your eyes without moving your head. Okay, so that went great, and he accommodated across his eyes just fine. Everything went looked great. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move down to the neck. Um, we're going to test cranial nerve number 11, which is our spinal accessory nerve. And so um, if you would please, um, I'm going to put my hand on your face and just please turn towards my hand. Good. Now look straight on the other side. Thank you. And would you please shrug your shoulders? Great. Good. So that is intact. Um, as we're inspecting the neck, we would put the uh, patient in a 45 degree angle and we'd ask them to turn to one side and we would look to see uh, if there's any jugular vein distension. Normal findings would be that we would not see anything. The neck would be smooth and flat. So next I'm going to palpate for the carotid arteries. I'm going to do that one at a time. And what we want to find here is that they are equal and that they are um, pressed, they are not too, they're not bounding, but that they're not weak either. And they were normal and good there. And next we're going to auscultate the carotid arteries and we're going to use the bell of our stethoscope. And normal findings would be that we would hear either the heartbeat or nothing at all. And please hold your breath. So I could just hear a faint heartbeat, which is good. Um, abnormal findings would be grueling, which is a whooshing sound, and that would indicate that there is some sort of constriction of the airway, uh, maybe some sort of um, uh, clogging or something in the carotid artery. So next we're going to be uh, moving to the arms. And um, so could I please see your hand? Both of them, please. Thank you. And so the whole time we're doing this, we're looking at the skin for any swelling, any wounds, um, if he had any IVs or drains or anything like that. We want to be inspecting those to make sure those are safe and good. Um, and we'd also want to be assessing for temperature and moisture um, and anything that would be of concern. So we're going to check for capillary refill. And what we're looking for is that the return is less than two seconds, which it is. That's good. And next, we're going to be checking the radial pulses. And we do these at the same time. And we want them to be equal and plus two bilaterally, which they are at a rate of 60 to 100 beats per minute. And we want them to be um, at a steady tempo, meaning regular intervals between each beat. So next we're going to do range of motion. So if you please just mirror what I'm doing. Okay, very good. And um, if you would please just grasp my fingers with your hands and squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. Okay, great. So his hands, his grip strength is nice and good and equal. Will you please close your eyes and tell me where you feel me touching you? Left arm, right arm, left uh, bicep. Okay, great. So his um, sensation is present and good. 
Okay, so now we're going to move on to one sounds. So, um, if you'll just please sit straight up for me. So what we would be listening for normal sounds would be that in the area of the trachea we would hear bronchial sounds and those would have a longer exhalation and they would be a little bit higher pitch sound. Um, then we would have bronchofascicular sounds which would be kind of in the mid range on the front and between the scalp scalpula on the back and those would be medium pitch sounds and the inhalation and exhalation would be equal. Then on the peripheral peripheral areas we would hear fascicular sounds which are low pitch and soft and the inhalation would be longer than the exhalation. And as we're listening with the diaphragm we want to hear that um, everything is nice and clear if you just keep taking deep breaths for me, please. Okay, and then on the back, I'm going to listen um, between the scapula and then directly below the scapula. And I can also listen um, right above the scapula, but I basically never want to listen above a bony, uh, a bony area. And we just want to make sure that we're listening to the three lobes on the right and both lobes on the left. So next we're going to be listening to heart sounds. And for heart sounds, we're using the bell and the diaphragm of our stethoscope. And we will be listening, uh, starting with the um, aortic valve. And then the pulmonic. And then herbs point, and then the tricuspid, and then mitral. So at the aortic and pulmonic, S2 will be louder than S1. At herbs point, S1 and S2 will be equal, and at the tricuspid and the mitral valves, S1 will be louder than S2. Also, at this time, we would um, palpate for the um, apical pulse, and normal findings would be that it would be a regular rhythm with a beat of 60 to 100 beats per minute. And uh, we would watch our watch for a full minute to count those beats. And this is a point of maximal impulse. Um, and this is a great place to um, take a pulse. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the abdomen. You, would you please lay down? So we're gonna move through the abdomen, thinking about it in quadrants. I'm gonna choose to do a clockwise pattern, start, starting with the bottom right and moving my way clockwise. Um, upon inspecting the abdomen, you would not want to see any pulsing or abnormal um, protrusions or anything like that. The uh, abdomen should be soft and either flat or slightly rounded and in even shape. And so the uh, first thing that we're going to do after we inspect is we're going to listen. And we're going to listen to each quadrant for a full minute with the diaphragm of our stethoscope. And we will be listening for um, bowel sounds and normal findings would be that we would hear bowel sounds um, five to 30 times per minute. If we did not hear any bowel sounds, we would have to listen to each quadrant for two full minutes per quadrant 
to confirm absent bowel sounds. And we really want to look at the full picture of this patient if they had just had, um, you know, abdominal surgery or something like that. We would want to consider that. So after we auscultate, we want to palpate. And Mr. Tipton, if you feel any pain or discomfort, please let me know. So I would just be palpating, again, all four quadrants, one at a time, in a clockwise fashion. I would be very gentle, um, just barely pressing in. I'm just really looking for tenderness here and um, to see if I feel any passes or anything unusual in these areas, which I don't. Um, when was your last bowel movement? Yesterday morning. Okay, so that's good. Uh, normal findings for bowel movement would be um, at least every three days and hopefully not more than three loose stools in a day because that would be diarrhea. Um, are you having any trouble with either urinary um, retention or incontinence? Are you having any trouble with urination? No. Okay. And then after I ask about urination and uh, bowel movements, I could also at that time palpate for the femoral arteries, which would be right here. So the next part of this will be, um, and also as we're looking at the abdomen, we want to look at the anteroposterior diameter and hopefully the transverse diameter is larger than the anteroposterior diameter. Um, in this case, he has a, health, a healthy proportion for that. So now we're going to be looking at the legs. And again, we're going to be looking for signs of swelling, um, temperature, um, hair growth, um, any bruising or uh, wounds that the patient may have. Um, especially on the legs, we want to be looking for edema and palpating for edema. I don't see anything like that here. Um, I'm going to check his capillary refill, which again should be less than two seconds. And then I'm going to check his uh, pedal pulses here and then the posterior tibial pulses. And we're, hope, we're looking for them to be plus two bilaterally and at a steady even rhythm with a beat of 60 to 100 beats per minute. And so next we're going to test for strain. So could you please do the gas pedal? Great, thank you. And pull up? Great, thank you. And now we're going to check for a range of motion. And then move your leg. Great, thank you. And at this time, as we're touching the patient's leg, we can also feel for uh, muscle tone and things like that and temperature. Um, and lastly, we'll check for sensation. Um, could you please just close your eyes and tell me where you feel me touching you? Uh, left foot. Okay. Right knee. Okay, great. And so, um, like I said, throughout this entire process, we're going to be wanting to look for any risk or hazard in the room, any um, swelling or concerns with the integumentary system. We'll also be looking for um, any discoloration, bruising, moisture, temperature, um, all those things we want to be examining throughout and looking at the patient's reaction, looking for signs of pain or anything like that. Um, and then we also, lastly, if appropriate, would look at the Braden scale. A scale of 23 to 18 would mean that the person is not at risk for developing a pressure ulcer. If they have less than that, they would be at risk. The scale looks at um, nutrition, activity, moisture, sensory perception, mobility, um, and uh, friction and shear. And after all this is done, I would make sure my patient is safe. I would wash my hands and I would document my findings.